So hello everybody and welcome to this um, short-ish um, presentation called Eczema Unveiled from Roots to Remedies. I'm Jonathan Stalick. I'm a professional homeopath in case you don't know me and I'm I've been practicing homeopathy for almost 40 years now. And of course, eczema is, a, is such a big issue. Um, so it's something that I thought would be worth talking about. But this, the information tonight is is um, is quite, uh, it's at a basic level. So it's not going to be too, too scientific. <laughs> um, if you've got questions, please feel free to, to ask. Um, you can put a little chat thing in the in the box and um if you need to uh talk we can i can make you go live as well so that's that's absolutely fine but yeah it's i'd like you to engage with me uh, rather than making me do all the work so let's start let's have a look at what expert actually is for a start so it's it's called atopic dermatitis what is what does atopic mean um well i in the dictionary it's a form of allergy in which a hypersensitivity reaction such as eczema or asthma may occur in a part of the body not in contact with the allergen so it can it can go, be in any part of the body and as you probably know it's marked by red itchy and scaly patches um, they can be it can be dry or it can be moist so it's either called moist or uh, or dry and um it's so it can ooze it tends to be especially on uh children it can be in the bends of the elbows for example in the bends of the knees that's quite a common um manifestation for got lots of people coming in now let's let them all in um it, it's common in children we'll talk about how many children i mean it's quite a big percentage of children are affected by eczema but it can affect all ages and it's often linked to other atopic disorders like hay fever and asthma. And the triggers, it, it, they vary from person to person, but they can be allergens, they can be irritants, stress and weather changes. And we'll go into that in a bit more detail later on. So let's have a look at what um, about the immunity and the immune response and the uh, relationship to eczema. Eczema is often the result of an overreactive immune system. So when triggered, the immune system actually attacks the body's own cells and causing a skin inflammation. So it has some relationship to an autoimmune disorder, although scientists don't uh, characterize it actually as an autoimmune disorder, but it does seem to have some relationship there. The skin acts as a barrier and in eczema, the barriers compromise, making it easier for allergens and irritants to penetrate and cause inflammation. And then what happens is there's an inflammation cascade and uh, exposure to triggers activates immune cells, releasing inflammatory substances like histamines. And so the histamines, um, you know, you, we talk about taking antihistamines, which can be... Uh, on a temporary basis can help things like hay fever and also eczema as well um scratching damages the skin so it does set up a kind of chronic cycle that um uh compromises the barrier and then you get this sort of itch scratch cycle and sometimes infl uh, inflammation and infection even <clears throat> so let's have a look at this um so what is the difference because people sometimes get confused between eczema and other skin conditions so let's have a look at the differences so eczema is as we've said a chronic condition dry itchy inflamed skin triggered by a combination of genetic and environmental factors leading to an overactive immune response now psoriasis is an autoimmune that is an autoimmune disease and it is uh subtly different it leads to overproduction of skin cells causing thick scaly patches that can be itchy or painful and distinguished by the speed of cell turnover and the distinct pluck like buildup it tends to come in patches um on certain parts of the body called plaques and um contact dermatitis is 
where there's a direct irritation or allergic reaction to a substance touching the skin. For example, like a lot of people are, are um, uh, allergic to nickel, for example, you know, a metal, certain metals set off uh, this dermatitis. That's quite common. Or it could be, what you know, washing in certain chemicals or soap powders, etc. <clears throat> now, seborrheic um, dermatitis is affects the, the scalp. And it uh, causes scaly patches, red skin, and sometimes dandruff. It affects the oily areas of the body, face, size, the nose, and scalp. There we go. Now, rosacea is uh, quite different. It's a chronic inflammatory skin condition. Uh, it actually, it's actually the little veins of the skin are inflamed, which gives it the, which makes the skin go red, and there's flushing and redness. And it's um, distinct from eczema due to its facial redness, pimples, and absence of intense itchiness, and often is uh, can be associated with a, a, a oiliness as well of the skin. Um, so, so they, you know, there are also redness and itching in some of these uh, disease in some of these skin issues, um, and but they the causes differ. And the affected areas differ. Um, <clears throat> so it is important to understand the differences uh, so we know how to treat it. Um, obviously, this is this is um this presentation is sponsored by Salvex, which is my uh, brand for people with <clears throat> with um uh, eczema, psoriasis, and generally dry skin. And you'll be glad to know that Salvex work seems to work very, very well for not just eczema but psoriasis. We've had I had a just had a um, testimonial from a review rather from somebody uh, who just said it really helps the itching of psoriasis like very very quickly and was the best cream she'd ever tried so that was good that came in recently contact dermatitis and and seborrheic dermatitis we just we're just about to launch our Salvex dry scalp shampoo which uh, some of you may be interested in for the uh, for the scalp and for your hair <clears throat> let's let's move on. Uh, okay, so feel free to ask questions if you want to or make comments. Um, eczema and allergies, what's the connection? Eczema, uh, so between family, family history is very, very important. And as homeopaths uh, will always, a, a good homeopath will always ask about the family history, uh, the medical history of the patient themselves, but also the family history is incredibly important because that leads to uh, leads to sensitivities like eczema, hay fever, allergies, and asthma, and they can be interlinked. And might and we we well as homeopaths, not might be, but they are associated with um, where there's a family history of TB. And obviously, sometimes that's hidden. It's not something that families often talk about, maybe. But TB is a very very important link to eczema, hay fever, allergies, and asthma. So it's quite interesting. You should have a look back in your families and see ask your ask your uh, elderly relatives um if there was tb in the family it might be it might interest you um so 80 percent of kids with eczema might develop hay fever asthma see that's amazing 35 there is this definite connection 35 percent of adults with asthma or nasal allergies had childhood eczema if a mother has has allergies her child has a one in three chance of developing eczema um and 37% of kids with that severe eczema might also have food allergies. And I, what I would say is that the suppression of a uh, skin disease like eczema can then lead to things like hay fever and asthma and other. We know this as, as uh, homeopathic practitioners. We have seen we see this in our patients all the time. This connection between the suppression could also be vaccinations as well, but the suppression with using steroid creams, for example and other medications can suppress so really if you want to treat uh, eczema at a it's important to treat it as a root level and so although creams and um, medications can be sort of helpful it's important to treat it at the, at the root level uh, eczema may flare up due to certain allergens such as dust mites pollen pet sort of hair and and um, skin particles, certain foods, cosmetics, mold, and specific soaps. 
Um, so we want to look for pinpoint the allergens, opt for allergy testing to identify um, specific triggers. Let's find out what those triggers are. That can be helpful. Um, so you can get tests for allergens from, I think, uh, some uh, surgeries, doctors will offer that, or you can get it done privately. Um, maintain an eczema journal, track flare-ups and potential causes um, so that you become involved in your recovery. Avoid irritants. This includes wool, certain soaps, chemicals, and cigarette smoke. And you can obviously, you know, see which ones, if you avoid them, see if that affects the uh, your eczema. Minimize exposure. I'll utilize dustproof bedding, reduce contact with pets. Obviously, I mean, we, you know, that's uh, not always easy, you know, if you've got a pet and also, um, especially if you love your pet, uh, you don't want to reduce contact probably. Um, the good thing about uh, something like homeopathy is that it can treat the sensitivity. It's not just about palliating. In other words, it's not just putting a plaster over the problem, but it actually treats the sensitivity and can help you to become more, less sensitive to these triggers. Um, so yeah, of course, you know, we're going to recommend Salvex Rescue Cream for relief because it does really, really help. It takes, it reduces the itching, it reduces the inflammation. And we'll go into that a little bit more, um, later. Um, breastfeeding is, is very good. Um, dietary changes for infants, keeping children's fingernails short. And there we are consulting a homeopath holistic treatments. Um, <clears throat> what is the modern, what's modern medicine got for eczema? Well, Topical corticosteroids is often the first line. Um, and they, of course, they are, you know, they are very effective in what, in that sense, they will reduce inflammation and itching uh, very, very quickly. But the problem is they don't cure. So as, normally as soon as you stop using it, it, the problem comes back. And also used over a long period of time, they can cause damage to the skin and also have other um, not very nice sub side effects like they can affect your immunity for example antihistamines sometimes are used to uh, decrease itching especially at night emollients is, an emollient is a moisturizer um, so yeah some people use e45 the a lot of emollients contain paraffin uh, paraffin wax which is not very great for the skin because it just it blocks the skin it doesn't allow the skin to breathe so we tend to avoid that a natural cream is is generally a lot better because it it doesn't uh smother the skin uh calcineurin inhibitors non-steroidal creams that reduce inflammation and skin reactions um and as we said before they can have some side effects and they don't they often don't address the root causes which is really the uh ideal in this situation let's have a look at um uh, let's have a look at uh eating what what do you eat now foods that uh contain omega-3s are excellent so all kinds of oily fish for example salmon trout um uh not sure about tuna um but uh oily fish are very good salmon particularly flax seeds all kinds of seeds like pumpkin seeds flax seeds um, hemp seed is or hemp seed oil actually is, is very nice uh, you can use hemp seed oil as a sort of salad dressing it's got a slightly nutty flavor and um, or you can even use it in smoothies and that and that sort of thing so that's a good one to have and hemp actually contains uh, not just omega-3 but the six and nine as well it has the perfect human profile of omega-3 six and nine so it's very good for all kinds of uh, things apart from the skin the heart and the joints etc um probiotics uh are good and you, live yogurt particularly in kefir a uh, vitamin e is is excellent for so almonds and sunflower seeds which also i think contains the omega-3s and improves skin health um try if you well you need to check if you're you you may be uh, allergic to dairy so it's worth checking that out and gluten if you are then obviously cut back on that and uh yeah, get homeopathic treatment. Um, processed foods, high in sugars and artificial ad additives um, can affect eczema as well. We just wanted to say something about, obviously, uh, feeding kids can be a, um, a challenge um, because they just want, they want what they want. They want to eat lots of sweets. And um, so how what can we do? Um, so 
um, water, get them to drink uh, as much water or, or uh, um, a fr I suppose, a fruit juice as well. Um, um, we talked about omega-3, so found in salmon and walnuts. Um, and you can put them in sandwiches or even a, a pasta dish. And kids often will like that. So when they're sneaked in. Um, uh, so, and you can also get, um, this is interesting, you can also sometimes get um, flavoured omega oils. I think there's a flavoured hemp seed oil that's available worth checking out. Um, sort of foods that are colourful often win kids over. So berries, oranges, spinach are packed with skin-loving vitamins. Um, yogurt, often kids like yogurt and even kefir. And they enhance both gut and skin health. There's a big connection between the gut and skin health. So it's really important. You know, antibiotics are definitely a no-no for gut health. And so it's, if you can avoid those, it's it's better. Um, we want to keep the harmony of the body. This is the that we want the body to be able to have a flow and be able to um have normal reactions. Once you start uh sort of antibiotics vaccinations these all affect the body's own natural ability uh, natural immune system and the natural ability to um uh, to uh, keep itself in order um natural foods over processed ones for happy skin um check for allergies we talked about that and um be patient with uh dietary changes obviously they, they can take some to take time to show effects and also just for people to change their habits of a lifetime. <clears throat> what about um, other environmental lifestyle influences like eczema? So understanding things like environmental triggers. Um, I'm going to, I'm recording this, uh, this session and you'll all automatically receive probably tomorrow. Now you'll receive a copy of this, uh, video so you can always go back over things if you want to uh, reference things um, so climate extreme extreme temperatures dry air so things like central heating for example can make a difference um, there's pollutants tobacco smoke harsh chemicals in cleaning products personal care items it's it's good to get into the habit of shopping for milder um for example, shampoos often that contain sodium laurel sulfate or sodium laureth sulfate or the ammonium laurel and laureth sulfate, and they can be they can be quite harsh and can um, affect uh, skin and cause irritation. Um, we talked about pollen, mold, dust mites earlier. Stress, high stress can weaken the immune system. So, especially I found, um, you know, uh, bottled up emotions can sometimes uh, be the the trigger for eczema. I had a number of patients that, when they were having an argument with their uh, partner, for example, then the eczema would get worse. So there's a definite connection there. So relax and take relaxation techniques, and of course homeopathy, which is great for the emotions as well as the physicals. Sleep quality, adequate and quality sleep, regular exercise. These are all sort of fairly common sense things, aren't they, really? Moisture, home environment, uh, using sometimes using a humidifier during the dry months and air purifiers. Um, you know, I, I mean, one doesn't want to sort of wrap kids in cling film, you know, and sort of make their lives sort of, the, you know, to, to sort of, you don't want them to become... Um, like a uh in a laboratory environment you know you want kids to live so these all these kind of things need to be done in moderation so they don't they don't sort of restrict the life too much natural holistic approaches so we've been talking about homeopathy which does treat the individual it, can, it takes into account the emotional, the physical, and the genetic facts. We talked about family history. It's actually really, really important. These, you know, sometimes we need to give a remedy that actually deals with the tuberculosis or the some other kind of issue in the family that's kind of still having its effect on the generations following. Um, I've just put a few remedies that we sometimes use in, but there's many, many remedies that cover eczema, graphitis, sulfur, natmur, natrium muriaticum, which is salt, and rustox, which is poison ivy. Rustox is a very is a very important uh, um, 
remedy for all kinds of skin issues, actually, not just eczema, things like impetigo, for example. Um, herbal medicine can be very effective. And um, acupuncture is also, those those three are the ones I know. There may be others as well, but those are the ones three I know. And let's see what we've got here. Oh, yeah, so I thought I'd put in just, this is a, um, a case of a young girl just to show you how homeopathy could can work and also a remedy that perhaps you might not know um, and is uh, quite an unusual remedy, but this is a 14-month, old girl i treated her a couple of years ago um she actually developed eczema after um uh does it actually say eczema was it eczema it was it has itchy there was there was a combination it was itching itchiness hives it was kind of looked like a little bit like eczema but uh, there was also scabby lesions um and affected the back genitals wrist hands feet and face um she had a loss of appetite as well and this is all after very uh soon after the one year vaccinations um she has sleep disturbances as well <clears throat> so this is a typical homeopathic case where we consider everything it's not just the we're not just interested in the skin we want to treat the whole person and vaccinations uh these those are the vaccinations she'd had um she'd had a fever following previous vaccinations that they managed with Calpol. Um, the father has a history of eczema. They treated they treated the kid with med, med, um, medicines like antibiotics. So quite powerful antibiotics, antihistamine, paracetamol. You know, I think parents sometimes get really quite panicky with uh, when eczema. I mean, it, it's often quite disturbing to the child, especially with the itching and the you know the the, uh, the itching and scratching is quite is un not very nice to look at and to see and to see the child suffering. Um, it was a breast, this was a breastfed child, um, as sociable, happy disposition, but a bit distressed and clingy at the moment with this uh, problem and a history of parental conflict. The father has aged ADHD. And the remedy I gave this child was a remedy called malandrinum. And it's, a, it's a, a bit of a sort of strange one. We use, you know, some people think homeopathy is all just plants and nice flowers, but it's not. We do use a lot of plants and a lot of flowers, but um, malandrinum is not made from flowers. It's made actually from a secretion on the horse's skin. It's a kind of greasy secretion on, on a horse's skin. Um, so it can be a remedy that's useful for horse allergies, for example. But in this case, it wasn't, there wasn't a horse allergy. Um but it fitted, it just fitted the, this particular case with the hives, the itchiness, the scabby lesions, et cetera. Um, and the, the post-vaccination is a big post-vaccination uh, remedy. And it cleared the cleared the case. The, the, the child got much, much, much better uh, from this and cleared all, all aspects of the, of the case, not just the skin, but the other things improved as well. So um, homeopathy <clears throat> really is worth worth considering um uh, for these kind of things so let's move on uh vernix i thought i just wanted to mention vernix because it's such an interesting substance and some people might not be aware of it it's um so it's a the waxy cheese like white substance it's not very nice but it's found on the coating of the skin of newborn children and starts to appear on the feet around the 20th week of pregnancy so what does it do? What 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 is it? What is it? It's water. It's got lipids and fats in it, which are eighty percent of its weight, um, and proteins, uh, which have my antimicrobial properties. So it actually guards the baby against infections, and it's an incredible, uh, incredibly important part of the child's kind of development. Um, some they used to just kind of really want to wash the uh wash the vernix off as quickly as possible because it's a bit mucky but it's actually better to leave it on if possible for as long as possible it is a natural moisturizer it shields the delicate you know the newborn skin from amniotic fluid uh which uh can uh affect it um 
and it uh, offers a protective layer against bacteria. It's very important and other pathogens. And I think it does have an effect on the child's uh, skin barrier function going forward. So it's really worth, you know, if you're going to have children in the future, it's really worth bearing that in mind. And so allowing the vernix just to be there, you just leave it there. You can leave it there for either, even, I think, weeks. And then just, uh, if necessary, or days, certainly, and then just it'll just when they when you bathe the child it'll come off naturally um i wanted to talk about just salvex some of the ingredients in salvex this is our my um uh skincare brand and um it's i when i formulated it i wanted to really make it um the most effective cream on the market and it's got kind of lots and lots of ingredients and some some people ask me there's something to say to me why do you have so many ingredients and once they see it as a bad thing um one of the advantages of in putting in a, a, a quite a lot of different active ingredients is that firstly not everyone responds to the same active ingredients so we're putting in a, a sort of a complementary ingredients in a in a a, a well-rounded formula um, means it helps more people more of the time but also it does it limits the uh, tendency to become uh, sensitive to uh, to an ingredient so if there is a sensitivity say somebody's uh, sensitive to lavender oil um, then because there are lots and lots of other ingredients in there uh, they will calm down any sort of sensitivity to that lavender oil so we get very, very, very few people kind of complaining about um, allergic reactions. Um, the two ingredients I want to really point out, because the, this makes uh, salvage really different, is the beetroot extract, which is incredibly moisturizing. Um, and the cherry moya, which is a fruit found in, uh, is found, well, it was originally found in South America. And it's, I mean, you know, they they eat it as a fruit, uh, but it had a lot of scientific trials done um, and shows it's rich in antioxidants and it does uh, actually act as an anti-inflammatory uh, ingredient. And aloe vera, of course, calendula, vitamins, it's got vitamins in it as well as the herbal extract and oils. Ekim oil is a lovely, lovely oil. Um, and uh, jojoba oil and shea butter. And there's lots of other ingredients. So I've just put the sort of main ingredients there, but there's there's more. And we do a there's a, a, a to complement the cream. There's a a very nice cleansing shower oil, um, which is great. Um, can be actually applied directly to the skin as well after a shower. So if, if you if you've got really perhaps if you've got a lot of eczema all over the body, it's a good one to use. You could use it all over the body. Uh, we will be launching a body lotion at some point as well, but that's a really good one to use. And it actually milks up in the shower uh, under hot water, so you you'll find it will just wash off, and um, but still leaves the skin sort of nicely moisturized and and very very slightly. It has a sort of a very sort of thin uh, layer of oil as well. Um, so um, some practical care tips clothing soft breathable fabrics are better than so things like um, nylon um effort to deal with the scratching mittens or distractions actually because keep them distracted is the best way but make sure their nails are trimmed that's obviously important uh lukewarm baths and as we mentioned before you can use salvex cleansing shower in the bath itself as well which is lovely and it has a spa aroma it's really wonderful uh, fresh unisex uh, aroma so it's kind of uh, yeah it's got a very nice you can pamper yourself with it as well um, you don't actually have to have by the way you don't have, need to have um, problem skin or problem scalps or um, to use the salvex products they, it's meant for all the family and you can use it just as a sort of general general moisturizing uh, products as well and then of course we've got our uh scalp comfort dry scalp shampoo coming out this month and there's a uh there's a special offer on it at the moment on the website a pre-order offer so you might be interested in that um <clears throat> eczema care for kids the basics um 
20% of children experience eczema. Um, we've talked about some of this really. Bath rituals, yeah, lukewarm water, we've said that. Pat dry, so don't rub, but pat dry, so you leave a little bit of moisture on the skin. Lock in the moisture with either the, with the rescue cream or the, the shower oil as well, so you can use that um, after a bath as well. And uh, comfortable cotton, loose-fitting clothes. Um, we talked about detective work, identifying triggers, maintain moisture, prevent scratching. We talked about this. Okay. And then um, we, I just wanted to, yeah, just there's the dry scalp shampoo and um, there's the special offer as well. So, um, and I think, is that the last, I think it's the last, that's the last slide. So, um, any, any, let me just unmute everybody so if we can, uh, well, you can, you can now, you can now unmute yourselves. Uh, if anyone's got any questions or comments, now is the time. John. Yeah. Yes. Hi, right. it's John here. Um, Really interesting presentation. Thank you. We didn't get the slides. I'm not sure if we should have done something this end, um, but don't worry. Um, you, couldn't, you couldn't see the slides? No, no. Lovely picture of you all the way through. You're kidding. <laughs> I, I wish somebody had said something. Maybe, got some, maybe something. I, I can see them. You can. Okay. okay. I was going to say, they are, they're showing on my screen bright and clear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Weird our end. You can other people could see them. Yeah. Was, yeah you well, there's obviously something <laughs> something yeah. on your side, John, I think there. Well you have to worried me then. You'd have to press all the buttons down the bottom to find the right screen. Ah, okay. Thank you. We'll oh, right. we'll do that when I look at it again. You'll get it, um, yeah, you'll get it anyway. Uh you'll yeah. get the recording. So what's what's your what's your question? What's your comment, John? Um well just just a comment really. I've had sudden onset uh I, I would call it eczema on my forearms and the back of my neck. Um, interestingly, you mentioned tuberculosis. I had a um, not very definitive diagnosis of tuberculosis about uh, oh. abdominal, abdominal. abdominal <clears throat> tuberculosis, which they, uh -huh. they, they couldn't culture. So that's why I say it's sort of slightly ambiguous, but I was on horrendous antibiotics for two years. Wow. Um, um, was that tuberculosis or was that paratuberculosis? Because um, there's a there's basically um, there's one form of TB that affects, tends to affect the lungs, and then there's the other form which affects the the gut and in animals particularly, actually. Um, but um, how did they? What what were you getting? What symptoms were you getting that alerted you to TB? Um, Basically, that was the the eventual diagnosis from all, all of the specialists. But a, a lot of sweating, loss of appetite, uh -huh. uh, massive weight loss, massive weight loss, which oh. I could do now, but um, <laughs> not not by, <laughs> not by Hello, Ger uh, Jonathan. It's Geraldine. I'm John's my partner. Hello, Ger Geraldine. His friend. Hi. <laughs> I, I don't know if you can see us, Jonathan. So something yeah, again. I can see you. I can see you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd, ju I'd just mention, mention that um, as sort of interesting. Okay, well, that, that is interesting. And so um, have you had homeopathic treatment as well? Oh, yes. Or, yeah, no. good. Uh, good. Not good. not for this, so I probably no. will okay. after this come and see you. Okay, cool. Do feel free. That's that's great. Thank um, you. And try the, have you tried the Salvex? No. Not yet. Just to keep it's worth it is. I mean, it's a really good standby just to sort of keep things under control while you're, you know, I would use it. I tend to use it. I give it to patients who are, well, I recommend it to patients who, you know, while they're on treatment, it just helps to keep things calm down, um, you know, in the in the short term. Mm. It's kind of worth. Um, yeah. And so had, um, all of the allopathic uh, treatments that you mentioned. Yes, it's much better than the allopathic creams. It's really gentle and really, really lovely and, and really nice to use. It really goes, it's not, doesn't, doesn't, it's not overly greasy or, you know, doesn't sit on the skin. Um, actually, interesting, we had um, 
somebody from uh, somebody wrote a review saying they went to the Arctic and and they wanted one product that would help that would they could use for everything because there was a sort of limited space in their bags. And they were recommended Salvex and they took the rescue cream and they came back. They said we it worked fantastically for lips. It worked as an eczema cream. It worked as a dry skin. It worked as a hand cream. It worked as a body lotion. And it worked better than all the other products that we were using for those individual things. <laughs> and we now use it every day at home. And it's the only thing we use. And we recommend it to all our friends. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was that was good, to, you know, Arctic explorers as well. Digressing slightly from homeopathy, Jonathan, what um, I used to make a uh, sort of cream for psoriasis when I worked at Neil's Yard for, you know, yeah. with aromatherapy oils and birch tar. Yes. So good for the skin in very, very, very mild, you know, oh. all doses. Oh. Um, Interesting. I, but I. It's not a homeopathic remedy, is it? But it's oh. wonderful for, you know, they used to, oh. in the woods in Germany and everything, slather oh. themselves with it. Um, well, did it have a strong smell? It does have a very strong smell. It's very viscous, very thick. Yeah, yeah. right. So you just need a very small amount. Yeah. Yeah, how interesting. Thanks for sharing that. That's, that's. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm aware of birch tar, but I've never sort of used it or um, I suppose maybe because of its... Uh, quite it is quite pokey mm, mm. I, I sort of perhaps wouldn't use it in a product you know except on its own it'd probably over overwhelm everything else mm, mm. <clears throat> yeah. thanks um anyone else yes bridget i think you can unmute yourself yes i have unmuted i just there wanted to say that um I've never had any eczema or anything in my life until I was in my early 60s and then it suddenly struck me and no one in my family had eczema. Um, and so I've been seeing a homeopath for about the last 20 years and um, the doctor gave me all sorts of horrible things and anyway, I managed to stop them all and she recommended salvex i'm doing a little um little thing for you here and oh. um <laughs> so i've been li living on salvex and then the oil is just no i couldn't wash in anything that you know i sort of gave up washing for quite a long time and then the wow. oil came along and wow. so i love the oil um Oh, that's really great. Thank you so I much. I have to say, yeah, I, um, yeah, so, I mean, I just, I use Salvex. Here we go. <laughs> the, ad, the advert, this is the, the plug. Yeah, uh, this is <laughs> your advert. Not, but... I have not had any prior... No, you don't Bridget. know me or anything. anything say this. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but it was my homeopath who suggested it. Oh, that's great. And, that's great. Um, but uh, it's it keeps me going at the moment anyway. Um but this year, so this has been several years with, with eczema, about five years or so. But this year, starting in late January, I had hay fever for the first time ever in my life. I've never had hay fever. And I've had it really badly. Okay. And it's affected, well, I sneezed. In and January? Sneezed. In, at the end of January. I, I live in the southwest. I think the spring came very early. But they say it's tree Um uh Good pollen point. that yeah. starts it so yeah. it's been going on all year and i've still got it now um so i had to i've been using a nasal spray i had antihistamines and then and i felt better in the middle of the summer when i went to the orkney islands for three weeks and i thought and i felt wonderful there and when i came back clean air i think uh, and then when I came about a month after I got back, my eyes, which had been awful and had got better, started again. And I've just had real trouble with my eyes, just going seeing, on and on and on. Poor. You're seeing a homeopath, so how, are they, is it not helping? No, can't seem to get to the bottom of the problem with the eyes. Um, so... Right. 
so anyway, I, it's just, you know, I've never had any of these things before. And now suddenly in my 60s, I've, you know, I've got eczema and then um, then hay fever. So it's all very exciting. But thank goodness, um, I'm just going to give you another little plug that Salvex really has <laughs> helped my eczema. But what I want now <laughs> is eyes. But uh, anyway, but I do see a homeopath regularly. So that's the end of my little um, advertisement. Thank well, you. What do you get with the eyes? Oh, uh, terrible itching and um, pouring. I mean, they just pour all the time. I'm always mopping them. I'll just tell you something that happened to me because I had a cold recently, but it was really a weird cold because it was like hay fever. I, my eyes were so irritated and they were running like crazy. I kept having to wipe my eyes and they were red and they were, they were just really, really irritated. And the remedy I used that cleared the whole thing immediately was ambrosia. Oh, ambrosia but, uh, i mean it, it look it's it's not the same for everybody and uh, no it you know, doesn't necessarily no i'd ask my homeopath yeah yeah but but anyway that it was a remedy that i hadn't sort of thought of using before um certainly not for a cold you know because it was it was only uh like a few weeks ago so it wasn't like even it wasn't uh it couldn't have been uh pollens or anything um but it felt like hay fever it's really strange so um but anyway, yeah. Um, uh, another, um, my mother had uh, hey, uh, like a cold, and again, similar thing with the eyes and um, the nose. And the remedy we used again was a very unusual one, which was uh, mimosa. Right. Uh, mimosa is a is the mimosa tree is something that's called uh -huh. the sensitive tree, because the leaves kind of close yeah. up at the slightest touch, and um, Oh, and so it, and it but it's got um a lot of those sort of kind of cold symptoms and then, and that again um cleared instantly it was amazing so um you need to yeah i'll talk to my homeopath have about. another word with your homeopath i think yeah mm. yeah thank you okay you um, ambrosia a plant jonathan yes yeah, yeah. Ah, not it's just in the it's in the sort of the the Astralis family, so it's Asteraceae, um, right? The Arnica group. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, anyone else? Any more? For any more, or can I go for my dinner? <laughs> okay. Well, let's let's call it a day. Thanks. Thanks ever so much. As I said, you will get um, you will get a copy of this video um in the emails. Look out for that and um and yeah it was it was fun and thanks thanks for being here to share it with me thank, thank you very much jonathan thank you jonathan nice to see you thank you bye bye bye, bye. bye.